And sorry, just so I'm clear on this, the inference would be that another intelligent civilization has sent some kind of probe to within our vicinity and that that had come into Earth. Yeah. Hello and welcome to GBN Originals with me, Patrick Christie's. UFOs, strange lights in the sky, aliens. Now these are topics that many people think are reserved for kooky tinfoil hat wearing lunatics. But it is now becoming impossible to deny the existence of mysterious craft and the possibility of intelligent alien life right here on Earth. In recent years, the New York Times exposed classified video footage of strange craft captured on military radar and on video by serving members of the US Air Force and Navy. Congress was briefed extensively about aliens and they took it incredibly seriously. Former intelligence officers at the Pentagon are also now speaking out about the existence, they say, of alien craft and government cover-ups. Well, I'm very pleased to be joined today by one of the world's most prominent and outspoken, most controversial thinkers when it comes to the mysteries of the universe. It's Harvard professor, a former member of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, a world-renowned author, and he goes by the name of Arvi Loeb. Arvi, great to have you on the show today. Thank you very, very much. Now, I've mentioned there a couple of things that have taken place relatively recently. So video footage that's emerged uh, and, and first-hand testimony of what many people believe to be alien crafts. What do you think they are? Well, we don't know. We need more data. We need the evidence to be available to the public for scientists to analyze. If there are objects out there, let's figure them out. Uh, the US government uh, is reporting about incidents where military personnel see things they don't understand. That could be an embarrassment to the intelligence agencies if these objects are being produced by uh, adversarial nations. But it would be much more significant uh, if they represent an intelligent civilization beyond ours. And to figure it out, we just need to collect data. That is the way that science is done. Uh, the US government is mostly interested in national security. Uh, what lies outside the solar system is my day job as an astrophysicist. You mentioned what lies outside the solar system. There is. A potential case, anyway, for the idea that as a lot of these mysterious crafts tend to be seen over water, that there's the chance that they actually could be based here on Earth, and it opens up the door to the possibility of a civilization that possibly pre-exists our own right here without necessarily having to look into the wider universe. Yeah, that's, that's possible, of course. Um, we may not be the first uh, around in our neighborhood. We are late to the party. Uh, the solar system um, formed in the last one third of cosmic history. Most stars formed billions of years before the sun. And there was plenty of time for intelligent civilizations to arrive here. So the question is, can we find evidence? Is there any space trash or functional devices in our backyard? And for that, you know, we need to look. We can't just have an opinion. And of course, the US government is monitoring the sky and investing $900 million in uh, national security and defense uh, uh, related endeavors. And they would be noticing things that are unusual. So it's natural for them to be the first to alert us. Uh, but we can also do better scientifically. And I'm leading a project called the Galileo Project at Harvard University. We have a, an observatory looking at the sky 24 seven. And we looked at uh, a million objects uh, over the past year, and we are now writing uh, a report about our findings. And I think the more observatories like that we place around the globe, uh, the better we will know if there are objects hovering and what their nature is. Uh, some military personnel report that they are moving in ways that our technologies cannot reproduce. Have you spotted anything that you think, on the balance of probability, is possibly intelligent life from out of our Earth? Well, there were two uh, objects, one called Oumuamua that was discovered by astronomers in 2017, seven years ago, and it was the size of a football field. It didn't arrive very close to Earth, but it passed near Earth. And most likely, based on the reflection of sunlight from it, it looked as if it's flat, pancake-shaped. And it was also pushed away from the sun by some mysterious force without evaporating, without any cometary tail. It was not a comet of the type that we are familiar with. And it's very mysterious. Uh, and then uh, even before that, four years earlier, a decade ago, there was uh, 
a, a, an object roughly the size uh, of a person that collided with Earth. Uh, it was moving faster than 95% of the stars near the sun. It will explode as a meteor. It could be space trash. Uh, this object had material strength that is tougher than uh, all um, meteorites uh, that were identified from the solar system, even wow. tougher than iron meteorites. And so I led an expedition to the Pacific Ocean, to the location where the US government satellites uh, saw this fireball. And we collected some materials and uh, found that 10% of the materials we collected have a composition that was never found in the solar system. So it's really interesting. And we are hoping to have another expedition to the same place to find bigger pieces that would tell us whether it was a Voyager-like meteor, uh, an artificial probe that uh, happened to be space trash that collided with Earth. Just so I'm clear on this, the inference would be that another intelligent civilization had sent some kind of probe to within our vicinity and that that had come into Earth. Yeah, I mean, uh, we sent uh, five probes to interstellar space. Uh, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, and New Horizons. It will take them uh, tens of thousands of years to leave the solar system. And once they leave, they would be space junk. They will not mm. function anymore. And the question is whether there, there is a lot of uh, equipment like that that is not working anymore, but may collide with Earth every now and then. You know, even the Tesla Roadster car that was launched by Elon Musk in 2018, it's mm. now on an elliptic orbit around the sun and it may collide with Earth in 20 million years. And it would appear as an unusual meteor of uh, unusual yes. material strength and unusual speed. You, you mentioned Elon Musk there, which actually leads me on to another question. He is very keen on the idea that humanity might have to leave Earth one day and that we should prepare for that. When you look around our solar system or beyond, you know, where would we go and how urgent is that need, do you think? I think the best uh, plan would be to construct some uh, space platform uh, better than the space station where people can live and it provides all the uh, needs of those people. I mean, of course, another approach is to go to Mars. Uh, but the problem is there is no atmosphere there. And living on the surface of Mars is, is really tough because uh, the temperature changes by hundreds of degrees between day and night. And there are very energetic particles uh, bombarding that surface. Mm. So we might have to go underground into a cave. Uh, you know, it, it's, it will be ironic because humans started from prehistoric caves and we might have to go down to a lava tube there on Mars and uh, because that that way we will be protected from the extreme variations in temperature and the energetic particles. Um, but the problem with Mars, it's, it's, you know, it's a particular platform that nature provides us, but it's not ideal for the way we want to live. And so I think building artificially, uh, something like Noah's Ark, you think about Noah that uh, in the biblical story that was worried about um, uh, the great flood and put the uh, animals into an ark and you can use it as a metaphor uh, and build a technological ark that will mm. uh, provide the habitat for people to live in one of the other possibilities when it comes to craft that maybe we're seeing here on earth or the possibility of intelligent life etc is that they might not necessarily come from outer space. They could be something to do with different dimensions. And this is something that is way beyond my intellectual capacity, I'm afraid, Alvi, which is why I've got you on. Um, is that a possibility that we actually live in a kind of uh, interdimensional, I suppose, what would you call it, universe? Well, it's quite possible that many things we are not aware of because, you know, even the, the composition of the universe, uh, we know that 85% of the matter in the universe is of a form that we have never witnessed. Uh, we are making up a uh, out of matter that makes up only 15% of the, the cosmic mass budget. And um, we should be modest because there is a lot that we don't know. Uh, we don't know also what the vacuum is made of. We don't know what happened before the Big Bang. We don't have a good theory of that unifies quantum mechanics and gravity. And as you say, there may be even extra dimensions. So, I think we should be humble 
when we approach our environment. And uh, and perhaps, you know, there is a smarter kid on the block that could teach us some of these things. If we find functioning technologies, they might be far more advanced than ours. And it will be just, we will be filled with awe, just like Moses in the biblical story, when he saw the burning bush that was never consumed. You know, mm. nowadays you can find in electronic stores, gadgets that would have uh, brought much more awe to Moses. So clearly very advanced technologies appear like miracles. Well, and also as well, it can't be ignored that I believe that the US Navy and military had updated its radar system which then led to them being able to spot some of these craft and these drone-like tic-tac-shaped objects, which I know that there is a lot of footage of, which implies that as our technology improves, there might be things around us very close that we then suddenly become able to see, which we've not been able to see thus far. But I mean, this would all require a massive paradigm shift in the way that we think about our existence, and dare I say it as well, human history. And there have been some people, the likes of Graham Hancock, who's done some fantastic documentaries uh, on, on Netflix and written several books about this, come to prominence as well through the publication of massive podcasts like the likes of Joe Rogan and, and numerous others, uh, which you will be well aware of, uh, of course. And he basically says that we should rethink human history and that the longevity of life on this earth goes way back further than our current paradigm would suggest. And I wonder if there's something similar that needs to be done when it comes to the way we try to imagine UFOs or intelligent life, etc. The difficulty with that, Arby, is that it appears to me that there is a massive amount of intellectual scorn poured on people who dare to suggest things like that. So if you go against whether or not, in Graham's case, it's conventional archaeological wisdom, or whether, I dare say, in your case, maybe it's conventional scientific wisdom, you get, well, frankly, massively derided, don't you? Uh, have you have you suffered yeah. that? Yeah, but I don't have any footprint on social media. And frankly, it's not about me. It's not about ever, any individual it's bigger than that uh, because, you know, if we have a neighbor, it can change the meaning for our existence. My hope is that it will bring us to a better place because our politicians are not the best role models you can imagine. And mm. we might get inspiration from seeing another technological civilization out there that does better than us. It's sort of like meeting a kid in your class that is doing much better and, 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 and it will inspire us to do better. And, um, you know, the only way to find out is not to have an opinion uh, or to uh, make comments about this subject, but to search for the evidence. That's the way science is done. This should be part of the mainstream of science, of physics, astronomy, because the public cares so much about it, it will make a huge difference. And my hope is that if we find a partner out there, you know, we would realize that we are all in the same boat here on mm -hmm. Earth. And... Rather than fight each other, we might actually cooperate. And, you know, this is the messianic message of peace on earth. And I don't think the Messiah will be one of us. It may be from another star. And there's also the implication as well, isn't there, that we don't actually necessarily have that much to fear. If we have been unwittingly surrounded by uh, intelligent life that we've been unaware of today, well, they've, not, they've not obliterated us. Have they? So the That's... implication there would be that, that, that maybe they're perfectly happy to, to coexist with us. Abby, can I just say a massive thank you for, you for your time today? And before I let you get going, could you just, um, you have got, I mean, you've got numerous books out uh, as well, haven't you, that I think are always uh, worthwhile. Would you mind just um, telling our viewers and our listeners maybe where they can get their hands on those? Yeah, the latest uh, books that I wrote, I wrote eight altogether, but the latest are Exoterrestrial and Interstellar. They're available in England. And uh, in addition, I write every day or two uh, an essay on medium.com, and these are available for free. So just search for Avi Loeb at medium.com. Thank you very much, Avi. I do hope to talk to you again very soon, and congratulations on all the incredible work that you are doing. You never know, you might just hold the keys to the universe. Avi, thank you very much. Get in touch with any ideas that you've got. We're a free-thinking bunch here, so let us know if there's any topics that you are desperate for us to cover. I've been Patrick Christie, so I'll see you next time.